Here in the Cascade Mountains, we get some of the heaviest snowfall totals of anywhere in the country. Now, when you couple that with the dramatically steep slopes, you get the risk of avalanches to anybody that may be traveling through. Atop this winter wonderland perch large pockets of snow, tens of thousands of tons that can quickly destabilize in an instant speeding downward 60 to 100 miles per hour. So in the United States, we have about 27 people die annually in avalanches. In Washington state, we generally have about two to three avalanche fatalities a year. Particularly at risk, hikers, snowshoers, or people sledding. So the Northwest Avalanche Center steps in. So today we're at Snoqualmie Pass, uh, and looking up in front of us here, we've got Guy Peak hiding up in the clouds to our right. And then up in the left, way higher, is actually Mount Snoqualmie. Warm, cold, windy, and sunny weather can all pose risks in some cases, while not in others. But the one consistent rule up here... Big changes mean big problems. So okay. if I have a big change in the weather, I should expect big problems with avalanches. Okay. Changes that can make their mark below the surface of the snowpack. By digging into the snow in the field, you can expose a lot of clues as to what happened in recent weeks. This is the old surface of the snow. Last week we had six additional fresh inches of snow. On on top of that, that discontinuity may create a weak plane over which future avalanches could slide. This weak layer we can test by carving out a block of snow. Do you a little, see that? A nice little mini avalanche so you, for you, you. You basically made a mini avalanche. Just made now. a mini avalanche. A new heavy snow or rainfall could yeah. destabilize this weak layer, especially on a much steeper slope nearby. That is shot eight at the top of the mountain. We see avalanches on shot eight quite a bit through the season. Yeah. And it kind of gives us an idea of like if that went, we should start really paying attention to some of these other areas. Big avalanche impacts can also depend on very small influences as different types of snow grains hold together differently. You know that old adage that we all learned as kids that no two snowflakes are alike? Well, totally true. And then once that snow's on the ground, it's changing all winter long. When those snow grains are really similar to each other, they play really well together. And when they're very different from each other, that's where we bump into issues. Some snow gets larger and more angular. And so that's actually called, for us, we call it a facet. A facet is an angle. And so certain snow grains will get bigger and more angular. Other snow grains will get smaller and they'll get more round. And funny enough, they're just called rounds. The last major classification of snow would be melt forms. All those grains add up to what could amount to two tons of snow, burying someone caught in an avalanche. An avalanche train is just our fancy word for any place in the mountains that an avalanche can occur. And it's not just the steep slope, it's where avalanches start, run, and stop. And so when we look over here at Denny Mountain, we actually can see a really nice example of an avalanche path. The really steep open slope is actually up there in the clouds. That's where the avalanche is going to begin. And these are, again, generally steep open areas, but it's not just the steep areas. It's also where they run and stop. You can see down low where the trees are smaller and the trees are even absent. And those are places that the avalanches run and stop. If you're caught in an avalanche and you're buried, you really only have one chance of surviving that avalanche. And that's that if your partners, the people you're out there in the mountains with, if they find you. Okay. So each of us carry three pieces of avalanche rescue gear. We carry an avalanche transceiver, an avalanche probe, and an avalanche shovel. So if I was caught and carried and buried in an avalanche, it would be sending out the signal. We can ask our uh, avalanche transceiver to find their avalanche transceiver, and it will literally lead you right in to your friend. It's telling me that he's about 17 meters that way. So as you get closer, the numbers go down, and the sounds even change. Okay. It's looking underneath the snow for my buried friend. Now we've got our lowest number right here, we'd actually pull out that avalanche probe and probe down into the snow. Okay. To locate the person and then use the avalanche shovel to dig them out. The Northwest Avalanche Center assesses the risks found in the field along with model data to update the risk of avalanches daily on a scale from one to five, low to extreme. So Dallas, I can see why people come here in the winter time. It's staggeringly beautiful, but you have to check the forecast before you come and the avalanche forecast. And you can check the avalanche forecast every day at nwac.us.
Reporting from the Cascade Mountains, I'm meteorologist George Waldenberger, Como News.